another edition of Flea Market Fantasy, the world's second greatest Bronze Age era comic book podcast. Joining me as always is new Mike L, Kevin Jank. No matter, Mike Dell, the CAA got you pushing too many pencils. That's right. Get to the <laughs> chopper. Yeah. Today, <laughs> right. uh, tell the kids what we're reading today, Jank. We are going to be reading Predator issue number one from 1989. Yes. By Predator. Dark Horse Comics. <clears throat> yeah, our first uh, issue from Dark Horse Comics we've ever done on this show. So hey, that's... look at that. That's something. Breaking and, new ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Predator. I'll be honest, I didn't even know. I mean, I guess I was aware they had comic books, because I do re- seem to recall Batman vs. Predator at some point, yep. right? There was a couple thing. Batman vs. Predators, I think Superman vs. Aliens, and possibly Predators. There was a lot of DC crossovers. And there was Aliens vs. Predator comics before they ever made Alien vs. Predator movies. Yeah, this is something. All right, but before we get into uh, Predator, let's remind everybody, if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. We're up to 134 subscribers. So we picked up three in the past week. So the flea army continues to grow. And again, (laughs) our goal is to get to 500 before the Earth. uh, 2023. (laughs) Before the sun burns out and our life is extinct on the planet Earth. So uh, let's make that happen. Before that Together Roberts movie comes true (laughs) and the world ends. (laughs) So there it is. Uh, like and subscribe. Thank you. Now, Jank Predator. Uh, well, so let's start with Dark Horse Comics, first of all. Uh, in, in the early 1980s, there was a fellow, he was named Mike Richardson, and he owned uh, a chain of comic book stores called Pegasus Books in Portland, Oregon. And then in 1986, he took the profits from all the uh, success he had with his comic book stores, and he created Dark Horse Comics. Hmm. And it was head, it's headquartered in now Milwaukee, Oregon, but Milwaukee is spelled differently than Milwaukee, <laughs> Wisconsin. So that's odd. Uh, is <laughs> Dark Horse publishes a lot of licensed properties, including oh, just, Star Wars, Buffy the yeah, Vampire. Lost that to Marvel. They lost Predator to Marvel now. <laughs> oh, Predator to Marvel? Yeah. No yeah, Aliens too. Last yeah, a- Aliens, uh, also the Terminator and uh, the Predator. Dark Horse also championed creator rights, and they published Frank Miller's Sin City, uh, Mike Mignola's Hellboy, and uh, Gerard Way's Umbrella Academy. Uh, you know anything else about Dark Horse comics? <laughs> uh, I'm sure I've read some other ones. They definitely did all that early Star Wars stuff that was popular, like, uh, you know, Heir to the Empire and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't think I've ever really purchased many Dark Horse comics over there. But I guess growing up, they were always like the third biggest company, probably behind Marvel, DC, and then you th- at least I always thought of Dark Horse next. Until Image started, yeah, yeah, yeah. Until Image and that, but uh, so, all right, uh, Predator. This is of course based on the 1987 movie starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, who mm-hmm. played Major Alan Dutch Schaefer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they ever call him Alan or Schaefer in the movie. So <laughs> probably Dutch. <laughs> uh, nope. The pre- the premise of the film that his military rescue team consisting of uh, Mac, Poncho, Blaine, <laughs> Billy, and Hawkins are tasked with rescuing a foreign cabinet minister and his aide from insurgents in an unspecified South American country, and mm-hmm. they become hunted by an alien. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Predator. True. <laughs> Do you know the alien species name for the uh, predator? Uh, wait, let's see. I wrote it down. Uh, Youtya? Is that right? Youtya. <laughs> wait, say <laughs> that again? Youtya. Youtya. Y-A-U-T-J-A. Youtya. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, I, of course, was a big fan of the first Predator when it came out when I was uh, oh, in live. That what is a very special. entertaining movie. Jesse Ventura is always entertaining when you see him or something. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, like Soul Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> and, uh, Carl <laughs> Weathers is in this as well, right? Yeah. They have that awesome handshake. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> it right. means everywhere now. But yeah, it is a, a great movie there. And, uh, so the Predator design, well, I should say there's been five Predator films plus two alien Predator films. So uh, <laughs> seven total. And how many have you seen, Jank? You're Mr. Uh, movie. Jank's a regular Cisco Ebert. 
for those people that don't know. He watches a lot of movies. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've seen all of them except that most recent one that's just called Prey. Uh, I did yeah. not watch that one, but I've seen the rest of them. Wow, look at you. You're an expert in the Predator. <laughs> I've seen one. I saw the first one. And, uh, that was <laughs> and you're like, I've had my film. Yeah. Back well, away from the table. <laughs> well, uh, Arnold wasn't in any other ones, right? He was just in that first one. No, they did want him to come back for the Predator, the Shane Black one, but I guess they wanted him to do like a cameo. He's like, I'm not doing a cameo. You either put me in the movie more or I'm not showing up. And he just did not show up. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't blame him, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would like to see him fight another Predator again. Um, it, it was a good idea to have Predator 2 be about somebody else. Like, I understood that. That's fine. But I do want him to, you know, fight another Predator before he dies. So let's get <laughs> this going again. Or do you want that to be, like, his final uh, his final action is fighting a Predator and then he dies? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, That'd Predator nice. hates a nursing home and Arnold has to <laughs> Uh, who was in the second uh, Predators, or was it Predators? Oh, it's you know? the cavalcade of people, but the main person is Danny Glover, so. Oh, that's right. Danny Glover. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting uh, choice for an action hero, but it works. Uh, he's like a hard-boiled, you know, detective leading this unit, and uh, he's got, uh, there's like, oh, man, so, a lot of character actors, but then Bill Paxton joins, so that's pretty great. Bill Paxton's like the new guy on the team. Um, he's awesome, as always, and then kind of, the FBI that's kind of trying to keep them out of the predator business is, uh, he's played by Gary Busey, <laughs> who we just saw in Point Break. Oh, Danny Glover and yeah. Gary Busey. That's pretty good. <laughs> so I guess the premise of, uh, Predator 2 there is like the predators come to the big city, like in this comic book. Is that kind of yeah, like? it's very similar. Uh, uh, you can tell that the movie took a lot of uh, pages out of this book. Um, it, it takes place in L.A. instead of New York like this one does, and there is like a heat wave because the Predator always likes to go where it's hot. That's something they always set up. I mean, that's why he was in the Central American jungle in the first one is that he likes things that are hot, and he always goes after things like people that have guns. Like he won't kill you if you're just unarmed, really. Oh, the time anyway. That's nice. Yeah. yeah he's sporting. He's a sporting fellow. <laughs> I didn't pick up on that in the book, but yeah, everyone had guns, huh? Everyone yeah. had guns. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, the old predator. Yeah, there, it's that... very similar because it's a lot of gang war stuff and, you know, predators taking out the gangs and the cops trying to track them down. Uh, I did see a quote online actually where, um, let me see if I could pull this up here. You get Jack yeah. doing research. <laughs> so I was like, this does seem very familiar. Like, did this actually influence it? And it said, in an interview with the website AVP2 Daily, Warner said the first Predator comic series absolutely had some influence on the film Predator 2. The basic plots of the film and comic series are ad- almost identical. When Dark Horse created the first Predator series, plans for a Predator sequel had stalled since Arnold Schwarzenegger had declined being in it. The series showed how you could use other actors in the lead, probably the first time that the comic series actually had an effect on the film franchise that inspired it. Do you think a uh, comic book series also inspired Caddyshack, too? <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't think so. Could be. <laughs> All right, so uh, the Predator design was created I by special you. effects artist Stan Winston, and uh, James Cameron provided inspiration for the uh, unique face because uh, Winston and uh, Cameron were on a flight to Japan together or something. I guess they worked together uh, on Terminator and stuff. And, and uh, Cameron said he always wanted to see a monster with mandibles. Ooh, so, that's a good choice. It's a very distinctive look, and I love it. So that's what Winston came up with. And there were several failed attempts to create the monster before uh, Schwarzenegger, he recommended Winston, because the two worked together on, like I said, Terminator with Cameron. And uh, would you like to tell the people who was originally supposed to play the Predator? Because it sounds like you know. Oh, sure, yeah. JCVD, the old John claude Van Damme. It's <laughs> crazy, right? The original Predator, yeah. <laughs> in a yeah, very terrible looking costume. You know, I, I didn't even see what outfit he had, but uh, they wanted the original idea was to be like a, a smaller, nimble, like a ninja kind of alien going through the jungle, murdering people. So that's why Jean Claude Van Damme was there. But they couldn't get the costume to work, I guess, in the uh, jungles they were filming in. And it was like uh, <laughs> difficult to move around in because I guess he's on stilts and like because uh, the monster's legs were bent backwards, kind of like, uh, I don't know, some weird creature, you know, with like, a clothing, like a clothing, like a goat. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So they, but then they said, you know what? Uh, he looks kind of tiny there. He's not a big fella. And we got Schwarzenegger and Ventura and Carl Weathers, you know, these big strapping lads. We, we need someone way bigger than that. 
So uh, they, they told uh, Jean-Claude to hit the bricks. And then they brought in uh, this fella. He's a mime actor named Kevin Peter Hall. And uh, he was seven foot two. And uh, he had just got done playing Sasquatch and Harry and the Hendersons. So, how about <laughs> nice. that? So next time you're watching Harry and the Hendersons and you see John Lithgow there screaming at Harry, just realize that he could have murdered Lithgow at any second. Uh, <laughs> he could be skinning him, skinning Lithgow <laughs> hanging from the ceiling. That's <laughs> great. It's a predator. All right. Any other uh, little predator tidbits you'd like to share with the people there, Jay? Oh, I mean, uh, I like Predator 2. It's flawed, but it's good. Uh, not as good as the first one, obviously. Predators is interesting, I guess. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of, it takes place on, uh, not, I don't think it's the Predator home world, but it's like a hunt world. Like they kidnap a bunch of humans, bring them to this world and just kind of like leave them to their own devices and, uh, start hunting them essentially. Um, and you start to realize that these people are all kind of dangerous in their own ways, even the ones that don't look dangerous offhand. Uh, it's interesting in, in certain ways. I think Danny Trejo's in there, Walton Goggins, who's, you know, always amazing. <laughs> I love Walton that Goggins. guy. <laughs> but, uh, um, let's see. Then Predator, the Predator was the Shane Black one. I was very excited about that. I like Shane Black's movies. Um, and you know, he was in the first Predator as just an actor. So I was like, oh, he's coming back to the franchise. That's pretty cool. Uh, but that movie just got weird. <laughs> All right. And, uh, there's some funny moments, but like, I don't know. It was just like, now the Predators are also, instead of just hunting, they also want to upgrade themselves by getting special DNA. And the the main thing they're after is autism for some reason. <laughs> like, that's going to help them. They want to better help autistic. It's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. This <laughs> is taking some weird turns. <laughs> And uh, the Alien vs. Predator movies, I think, are in their own timeline, essentially. Like, they're not supposed to connect exactly to either the Alien or Predator franchise. Um, but the first one's kind of fun. It's all kind of set in Antarctica. Um, I thought the Predator hates uh, cold temperatures. Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think this is like some kind of ancient tradition they do every hundred years or something where they, they, <laughs> they have to get catch an alien egg there <laughs> because, you know, they don't want it to get out and kill all of humanity. So they have to do it somewhere where they're so not, not people, I guess, is the other thing. <laughs> I don't know why they're so obsessed with Earth. <laughs> yeah, like, why don't, yeah. Would bring this alien egg to Earth in the first place. You got other places. You got your own hunt worlds, clearly. Just remember, Jake, whoever wins Alien vs. Predator, we lose. We lose. That's the only important thing. Right. Yeah. Alien vs. So, Predator Requiem, the second one, is very bad. That is not a good film. <laughs> don't recommend that one at all. <laughs> I'm shocked by that. All right, so uh, the creative team here for this issue, the writer is Mark Verhayden. And mm -hmm. uh, do you know anything about Mark Verhayden? Not a clue. Nope, never heard the All name right. before in my life. <laughs> Let's just talk about him here, I guess. Uh, 24 writing credits at uh, Dark Horse, including Aliens, uh, something called The American, and uh, three different Predator series. But he also worked in movies and TV. He wrote The Mask, the Jim Carrey thing. Or at least he oh, contributed really? to it because the mask was a uh, dark horse comic. Yep, and it sure was. Mm -hmm. So a lot more like, dark and, and violent than the uh, the movie ended up being. For yes. Sure. Yeah. And I never saw it. But yeah, from what I was reading, it seems like it was a, a big change in direction there for the movie. And he contributed at least. Uh, I don't know. Maybe something he wrote was based on that or I don't know. But then he uh, he did write the screenplay and stuff for Time Cop, I think. And, uh, oh, John Claude Van Damme. John Claude Van Damme chick. <laughs> Van Damme. Yeah. And then guy. he also, uh, yeah, our buddy Dave. <laughs> then he also, uh, wrote My Name is Bruce. What is that exactly? Do you know what that is? Oh, is that like a Bruce Campbell starring vehicle or something? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I, I, cause when I was uh, taking the notes and I read that, you know what I thought in my head, oh, Bruce Almighty is probably what I was thinking in my head. So I didn't even bother to look it up. But now when I read it here, I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> like, it's Bruce, I don't know. But, oh, but Jake, it definitely got Bruce Campbell in it. Oh, there you go. But you'll like this, <laughs> Jake. And, uh, from 2001 to 2003, he was the supervising producer and co-executive producer. And then in 2004, and he wrote nine episodes in 2004 of Smallville. Oh, okay. Jank loves yeah. Smallville. Right. Uh, I don't know. All right. <laughs> there was a time in my life where I was very into Smallville. 
Uh, it didn't last long, but you know, the series then went on for many more seasons and I still kept watching it. So who's the sucker? Yeah. From 2005 <laughs> to 2009, he was co-executive producer and wrote nine episodes of Battlestar Galactica. Hmm. How about that? That's a press Love that. Yeah. And, uh, from 2009 to 2010, he was consulting producer and he wrote four episodes of Heroes. That oh. TV show. If there was uh, anything outside of season one, he was probably terrible. Yeah, so yeah I don't know what that se- what would have been. <laughs> uh, from 2014 to 2015, he wrote two episodes and was executive producer of Constantine, a TV oh, show. Oh, that. Yeah. Did you ever oh, watch that? WB. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I don't think I ever did watch that show, but I saw, you know, that actor playing Constantine pop up on the other Arrowverse shows. So. Yeah, no idea. I think Pete uh, really he- likes, uh, you know. The Constantine uh, show. You really like that, that guy. That damn cousin Pete. And uh <laughs> 2016, he was executive producer and wrote two episodes of Daredevil. My beloved Daredevil. With, uh, oh. What's his face? What's the guy's name that plays Daredevil? <laughs> Charlie Cox. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's uh that fellow. He's the writer here. Cox. And uh the artist is a guy named uh, Chris Warner. I'm guessing you don't know anything about him either, or have you ever heard of him? Can't say that yeah, was never, one that really rang a bell. Yeah, I never heard of him either. He has uh, 20 penciling credits of Dark Horse, including Barbed Wire, the old Pam Anderson book, uh, The American, the same one that uh, Verhoeven did, Predator and The Terminator. And at Marvel, he did uh, Moon Knight, Volume 2, Issues 1 through 5 in 1985. So okay. I read that. I don't remember reading those. <laughs> uh, Doctor Strange, Volume 2, Issues 76 to 81 and 86 in uh, 1987. And then over at DC, he did Batman issue 408 in 1987. Oh, one, so, one issue. Yeah, that's, that's all you need. Yeah. Put on your resume. Yeah. I, drew an, I drew an issue of Batman. I drew, I drew a Batman. Yeah. <laughs> so there it is. That's the creative team here. And I believe the cover was done by Warner and Paul Chadwick. I think they were both credited with the cover. So uh, why don't you describe the cover for us? Cover. Yeah, it's pretty great. Uh, so we got the Dark Horse uh, little corner box there. It's kind of like a, a puzzle or like a chess piece. I yeah, like a like knight, knight from a chess piece. Yeah, yeah black horse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's a Dark Horse Comics underneath it. It's pretty cool looking. Uh, we got the classic Predator logo from the movie. So that's always fun. Uh, it's got the little lines, you know, coming up from the bottom. And uh, then it's set against like a red kind of gradient going down for the skyline. And you see New York City there. And the Predator is standing on top of a building, like shouting triumphantly. Holding his staff that's got like a skull and a, you know, spinal cord wrapped around it. <laughs> He's got his mask on and not showing you the money shot of his face yet. No mandibles just yet, but. Yeah, we should say like he normally wears a, uh, a mask and a helmet and he always has like dreadlocks in the back, <laughs> like yeah. long dreadlocks. <laughs> yeah. And on his right arm on the, he wears like this, uh, bracelet forearm thing with like two Wolverine claws on it attached mm-hmm. to it. And. It's got some other pieces of body armor. It's got yeah. like shin, shin guards. Usually one of his, uh, those wrist things are always equipped with some kind of a self-destruct device. So if he loses, then he just like blows himself up. <laughs> it's a real <laughs> dick move. <laughs> really taking his ball and going home. <laughs> yeah. That's what happened to Schwarzenegger in the first one. Yeah. 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 But yeah, when he takes yeah. his mask off, describe, would you like to describe his face when he takes the mask off though? <laughs> oh, it's a thing of beauty. I think in basically every movie they they copied the line from the first movie where basically as soon as somebody sees his face for something they're just like, "You are one ugly motherfucker." <laughs> <laughs> it's becoming like a running tradition. Uh but yeah, he's got like a big uh kind of like a weird bulbousy brain area, like it's kind of expanded <laughs> outward like the leader almost. It's a little bit wider than the normal forehead. Um and he's got these, like, beady, sunken-in eyes. Like, they're just kind of surrounded by black. And then he's got these beady little eyes in there. And uh, then, yeah, he's got, like, mandibles, uh, like you said, where he's kind of got the outer lips that kind of fold out. There's, like, four different corners. They go separate ways. And then he's got, like, a little in- inside mouth that has, like, two fangs up top and a couple teeth down at the bottom. And uh, it's quite the look. Kind of kind of very pizza face, too. <laughs> like, actual pizza. <laughs> Like it looks like melted cheese. Yeah, he's kind of like uh, I want to say like amphibious looking, maybe a little bit. Yeah, I could uh, see that. 
Yeah, kind of like the creature from the Black Lagoon, but with yes, the mandible. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. <laughs> All right. So that's the Predator. Now we uh, open up the book here and we get a uh, black and white, like, uh, title page. Not a title page, but just a credits page. I uh, mm. tell you everyone involved in this. And we see old Predator crouched on a uh, edge of a building there. Yeah, he's coming to the big city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's done hunting in the jungle. And then this this first page, there's this, the narrator. The narrator, the, the two main characters in this book are uh, two police officers, uh, mm-hmm. one named uh, Schaefer, Schaefe, and it's yeah. uh, Schwarzenegger's brother. <laughs> yep, turns out it is. Yeah. Although there's not really much of a hint of this guy talking with an Austrian accent. <laughs> so maybe they were raised separately. <laughs> But uh the narrator is his partner though, right? So what's his name? Ra- Rash R A C S T H something like yeah. that. Yeah. Rash. <laughs> and the, and the, the battle codes, I think. And he's kinda like uh he would be the Danny Glover of this tandem. Like he's kind of like He's uh, getting too old for this shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh old uh, baby Arnold uh, there, his little brother Arnold. He's he's a big badass guy. And uh, Yeah. He just Strapping. wants to go yeah, murder everybody and stuff. And then uh, <laughs> our, our narrator is all like, hey, he's just going along for the ride. He's uh, so all right. So we open up and there you see the sun shining here in the big city, and, and every, all the colors of these panels are like red and orange and yellow to show that it's hot in summer and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have a guy who just comes up behind his very attractive lady. And uh, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> <she's> her... <laughs> big fan. <laughs> Maybe like Marge from Pee Wee Herman, figured like the lady driving that truck, <laughs> right? Marge, yeah. yeah, I can see that. <laughs> but he just comes up behind her with a, a shotgun and uh, blows her head off, and uh, and it, <laughs> yeah, the heat's getting to people. Yeah, the title of the issue should have been "Is New York Melting?" And then they could have, <laughs> you know, put that on the cover and <laughs> no, 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 that's the that Aquaman's gimmick. That's Aquaman's gimmick. <laughs> But yeah, so this guy just murders his wife because it's hot, and the uh, our narrator fellow, he's just saying, "Oh, this stuff's going on all over the city. People are going nuts because of the heat. So dang hot, you know." And <laughs> what do you mean I can't take off my sweater? <laughs> <laughs> so we just see the cops chatting it up, and we see a uh, the big guy, Arnold's brother. He's in like shadows a lot of the time, but uh, he looks he looks menacing and imposing. And then Jank. We cut to a uh, gangland meeting between, between a group of toughs and Elton John, which seemed weird. But um, <laughs> <It did. laughs> yeah, would you, would you like to describe like, what's uh, going on here? <laughs> uh, that's a good call. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so this guy, the Elton John guy, he's kind of the more sensible one. He's like, "Hey, like I'm leader of this gang. You're leader of that crazy gang." Like, we got to get together and stop these Colombians that are trying to move in on our territory. Like, they're going to cut us out, and none of us will be making any money. So if we just team up, we can, you know, split all the profits ourselves, and we'll be all good. And the other guy's like, I'm crazy. I don't give a crap yeah. about any of this. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, so we got the one guy who looks like Elton John. I think his name is Lamb, which uh, seems weird. And then uh, the the other guy, the crazy guy, he's got, like, tattoos on his face and stuff and nose piercings <laughs> and stuff. And he's like, yeah, I don't care about profits. I, I just want to, you know, sell drugs and shoot people. That's all I want to do. You know, yeah. I'm a simple man. Like Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> That's all I want to do. <laughs> so while they're uh, arguing this, though, uh, they're trying to debate things here and uh, come to a an agreement. Uh, what happens, Jay? Well, you see the little three dots pop up on the back of uh, one of the guys there who's standing close to the window. And uh, bang, some, something goes right through him. Just right through his chest, explodes his chest out. <laughs> yeah, one of the henchmen there gets shot. Yeah, you yeah. say the three dots are like in a triangular shape, right? That's his uh, yeah. the predator's calling card. Pattern. Yeah. We, we should also say the other, predator's other big gimmick is he's got like a cloaking device, right? He can like mm-hmm. uh, blend into the background and stuff. That was pretty cool when I was a kid and we saw uh, Predator for the first time. We are like, oh man, look at that. <laughs> how's, how's Arnold going to fight this guy? You know? Yep. Can't even see him. So. Yeah, damage is tech. It's the only way. <laughs> so, yeah, their, their henchman gets uh, slaughtered there. And uh, the guy with the tattoos on his face, he says, hey, Lamb, this is your, you did this. And he's like, no, 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 I didn't do it. It must be them uh, filthy Colombians, you know. They're trying to take us both out. 
So the one guy sticks his head out the window and he's like, I'll take care of this shooter, whoever he is. Because usually when someone, you know, is shooting through the window, what you want to do is just stick your head out and look around. That's a, <laughs> a good idea. And, uh, but he just gets yanked right out of the window. And, uh, what up? Now th- this was a little confusing because, uh, they, they're like, how high up are they? They're about 10 stories up in some like old yeah. building or whatever. And apparently they just think someone is standing outside the window. Because they just open up with all their guns. That's true. Yeah, or like, they try to hit things across the street somehow. Like, they thought that was going to work. <laughs> they just all, like, empty their guns out the window, <laughs> shooting everything. And, like, yeah, we got they them now. Like shotgun. It's like, clearly you're not trying to shoot across the street. <laughs> <laughs> that guy who was hovering right outside our window, we murdered him. <laughs> and And I couldn't tell what was happening here at first. I will say this book, uh, the art's fine and everything, but the coloring is a little weird sometimes because ta- a lot of the book takes place at night. So a lot of mm-hmm. black and dark, heavy colors. And sometimes it's difficult to tell what's happening. Like, I didn't know what that was at first. It says that the predator's hand is like climbing into the window then, I guess. And yeah, it's very I, purple. And yeah, yeah no <laughs> idea what that was at first. It's a little hard to tell. And so like, what is that? And uh, now we cut back to our buddies, the cops. And they're just sitting in their car, and they get a call about shots fired at some neighborhood. So they're like, all right, let's go investigate that. And when they get there, a uh, dude gets chucked out of the window, and he lands right on the cop car. That old chestnut. Yeah. I've seen that a few times over the <laughs> yep. years. And boom, <laughs> sure shatters. And, uh, and then we see uh, Arnold's brother. He loads his gun, you know, because cause when they arrived at the scene, the cop says, hey, no one goes in there until uh, Captain What's-His-Face or whatever gets here, you know. And uh, – but Arnold's yeah. brother. It seems like this guy is kind of the uh, the Gary Busey character almost. The guy who keeps telling him to get out of here. Like, this is our case. <laughs> and we finally get our big shot of Arnold's brother there with his gun. And he says, I'm going in. And he's all jacked. You know, he's huge. And it's like, all right. We got to go in there. So he, he and his buddy, they go up into the uh, the building. And they're looking to see what's going on gang in there. Gang bang central. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he calls it gang bang central. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Phrasing. Sounds like one of those terms yeah. that people are searching for on the internet. <laughs> I think that's a, so, uh, but the uh, the Danny Glover kind of partner holds in the back there, and Arnold's brother goes in first, and he uh, peeks in the room, and it's just like a slaughterhouse in there. Yeah, there's and people hanging skinless <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Yep. Well, why is uh, that the predators move to skin people like? Uh, um, I guess it's a trophy thing, but oh, okay. what he does with all that skin. Yeah, I know. It's a lot of skin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe he's doing like a Buffalo Bill in Silence of the Lambs, and he's trying to make himself a person suit. <laughs> I guess. But, like, uh, they, they see that lamb, that lamb fell is dead, old Elton John. But the, the guy with the tattoos on his face, he somehow survived it, and uh, he's about to kill them because he thinks the cops are responsible for this. <laughs> like he just, this guy is really firing on all cylinders, like <laughs> shooting right out the window, thinking the cops somehow did this. <laughs> Clearly, it's this like is laser the worst. Blasters that can oh, take out guys. <laughs> and so he tries to kill the partners there, and then uh, he runs out the uh, the apartment, jumps uh, out a window, and like goes down a fire escape, and uh, they can't they can't catch him. So. And now the, the captain shows up, and he's all mad, and I, like you said, the Gary Busey guy. And he says, hey, Utah, give me two. No, he doesn't say that at all. <laughs> uh, but but he's yelling at him. And I don't know. It's just the usual cop stuff, you know? Yeah, everyone's trying to get jurisdiction. And be like, yeah. If I was a cop, I'd just be like, yeah, take it. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'll sit at my desk for a while more. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so now we cut, to, to me. we cut to a subway train. And why don't you describe what happens here, Jank? <laughs> so, yeah, this was this was weird at first because I was like, wait a minute, this doesn't sound like the Predator. But I guess they tried to explain it because uh, there's a bunch of people on the subway and two guys are just jibber jabbering about some nonsense uh, about like uh, Charles Manson was on TV last night and they got such well, huge ratings. Yeah, and, I think uh, they're like, network oh, executives, yeah. right? Aren't they uh, <laughs> talking about Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. These network executives are, they're packing heat. They sure are. Everyone on the subway, apparently, is packing heat. Yes. As we come to find out. Very strange. Which I guess, you know, the New York subway in those times, I guess I can yeah. see it. 
<laughs> Poor Giuliani, clean that shit up. <laughs> well, I guess it sounds like this is technically set in the future a little bit, because didn't they say like 91 at some point? In... Yeah, I think Predator 2 was set in like 97 or something like that. Okay. So we're slightly in the future. So, yeah, Charles Manson's got his own TV show. And um, so they're kind of. Yeah, it was kind of fun, though. There's a little bit of like commentary on, you know, the yeah, you little know, American the flag TV's kind of stuff going yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of cool. But, yeah, the one network executive just gets shot right in the chest, and he, he's smoking. And then everyone else just starts busting out their guns. They take them <laughs> out of their briefcases and everything. But it's the Predator. He's on the loose, Jank. He's on the loose. <laughs> they made the wrong move. They would have to, like, just let the guns stay in the case. Maybe he would have left them alone. But <laughs> Nope. Uh, <laughs> so now we come back to the uh, Danny Glover partner guy. He's in his kitchen. And I guess his family's not around, and he's thinking, hey, I'm too old for this shit, you know? I should yeah. be moving to, uh, where does he want to move to? Alaska or something. He's got a brochure up there on the refrigerator. I don't know, he wants oh, to yeah. move somewhere. Oh, maybe my wife has the right idea. Is this a hint? Yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah, here's a picture of me and Shafe. Oh, yeah. He didn't, he didn't <laughs> tell me anything, but we're best buddies. <laughs> I bet he may have one brother. I don't know. <laughs> we haven't talked uh, in six years. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, my dad was a police officer. He had several partners over the years. He never had their picture on a refrigerator. You know, <laughs> never, never happened. But this guy and Schaefer are tight. So, yeah. uh, I had about the picture of Alaska. He's like, me and Schaefer, we're going to go to Alaska together. Start over. <laughs> so then, yeah, the, there's a ding dong at the doorbell there, at the, at the doorbell, at the door. And, uh, Schaefer's there and he says, hey, they hit again, subway station, midtown. Want to go or do you want to dance? I didn't know what that meant. This was weird. <laughs> yeah, that's a slang I don't know about. Like, what does that mean? He's in his, like, robe and his boxers. Why is he, he doesn't look like he's dressed for dancing. I, I'm not quite understanding this reference. I, you think the guy would say, like, the tough guy would say, hey, let's go dance. Like, that's his uh, his lingo for let's get involved in the, in yeah. the trouble. But no, he's like, you want to go get involved in it or do you want to dance? So, like, do you think they would really go dancing if you didn't want to go? <laughs> <laughs> the way he was looking at that picture, I could see them going dancing. <laughs> <laughs> they take ballroom dancing lessons every Wednesday night at the learning annex. So anyway, they go down to the subway and uh yeah, they see the same thing that they saw at the uh the drug uh, or mob thing or whatever. Yeah. All the bodies skinned and hanging upside down and damn, old meat locker. And they're like, What is going on here? Things are getting crazy. And that other that same captain shows up or whatever his name is and he starts yelling at him again. And uh but then there's a guy in like an army uniform. He just walks up and says, "Hey, Cap, why don't you shut your mouth? I want to, I want to talk to these men. Like, who, who's yeah. this guy? You know, like, why would the captain listen to this? Guy? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, did this guy just randomly happen to be there, and he happens to know like Dutch's brother? But no, apparently he's there for a reason. But yeah, the way mm-hmm. they present it here, it's just like, oh, he was just was stand, just a bystander who happened to be in uniform. <laughs> well, why would the the captain care? Like, just because this guy's in a. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, but he's very impressed by this guy. He says, oh, sure, you take him. So they, he takes uh, Schaefer and his partner. They go to a bar. And they're drinking it up. And uh, when I was reading this uh, the first time, I'm like, oh, maybe this is uh, Jesse Ventura's character. You know, but then I was like, oh, no, he died, right? Jesse yeah, Ventura. he died. <laughs> 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 he, uh, I thought maybe this is him as an old older man, you know. But uh, no, so this guy's saying, hey, I knew your brother Dutch. We were in the Army together or whatever. And uh you guys don't want to get involved in this stuff that's going on here in New York. Don't get involved. It's crazy. Just keep yeah. to your business. And, uh, yeah, it seems like, but he doesn't tell them what is going on. No. Or what happened to Dutch? Like apparently yeah. Shafe hasn't seen his brother in a couple of years, but they don't say, Oh, he kept go- going after predators and died, or he's still looking for predators or, What's going on with Dutch? So maybe they get to that in the later like series that spent like spun off of this, but I don't know. Yeah, because he says he hasn't seen his brother in a long time or whatever. But um, th- this guy, he just walk, you know, has his drink and leaves. So basically, he tells them nothing except yeah. uh, <laughs> so they got him riled up. Like, oh, these might have something to do with my brother. Now I just let him. Blood. They just let him walk away, like without telling them anything. Because, uh, you know, he's like, don't get involved. And he's like, hey, buddy, this is our job. You know, we're cops and people are getting murdered. We kind of have to be involved. We're cops. So it's what we do. But he's like, no, no. He's like, uh, they like, he says, uh, they like the hot. And uh, once the, the heat dies down or something, they'll go away. 
or I don't know. Oh yeah, give it two weeks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> give it <laughs> two weeks. Down, and then we'll, we'll move on. <laughs> I'll go to Miami Beach. <laughs> so he leaves. So old uh, Dutch's brother, he's like, yeah, he takes his partner and they go back to the original crime scene of the gangland fight. And he's like, uh, there's got to be some uh, clues up there or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And, yeah. Even though the police have been going through there all night long, uh, but there's probably something they missed. I'm going to kick everything just, down. That'll <laughs> fix it. <laughs> I just have fight. a hunch that something's <laughs> going on up there. And so they, they go up uh, to look at the old uh, remnants of the the murder scene. And, yeah, he's kicking through doors. And mm-hmm. This guy hates doors. It's like the shockma of uh, the police force. <laughs> but when he's up there, though, he gets a feeling that someone, something's behind him. And he turns around, there's a predator just standing yep. there. Dreadlocks and all. Just kind of so, gives him the uh, the Aquaman to Black Manta. Just punch right in the face. <laughs> just backhands him. Like he owes him money. Smacking him around. And then we get a big <laughs> shot of uh, the predator standing over him, you know. And he's like, ah, look at me. I'm the predator. So yeah, that's pretty, pretty cool. good. Pretty good art of the Predator for this. I'll, I'll give him that much. And then uh, Dutch's brother kick, tries to kick him in the belly, and Predator just chucks him across the room. Yeah. And um, I don't know what's going on here. And then the Predator just slaps a little. Uh, yeah, there's a like really a, weird shot here. I was trying to figure out what the heck yeah. is going on with the floating like mask. And like, yeah. uh, it's like, this looks yeah. weird. <laughs> it looks, it looks like he turned into like a cheetah or something. I don't know what's going on there. It's supposed to be him going invisible, but he's not invisible the scene before that or after. So why go invisible for like one second? But then he like, I guess, puts a tracker or something onto uh, Dutch's brother's throat. Yeah. And his neck. <laughs> yeah. And and he goes, what the hell did you do to me? And then he like grabs a two by four and smacks the predator over the head and knocks his helmet off. So then we get the money shot. The predator yeah, shit. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> so. Pretty great. Looks and really good. And when the predator talks, it's in a bunch of gibberish symbols and stuff. But then in the middle, it says, let's give him some candy. <laughs> yep. Somebody on the, on the subway, or no, maybe I think it was one of the gang members said that. Uh, okay. Which actually, I believe they do do um, in Predator 2 as well, because there's like some kid, he sees a. Uh, like the predator sees a kid in like a cemetery playing with like a toy gun and he's like scanning him to see if he should kill him. <laughs> and the kid's like, Hey, you want some candy? And then later on the predator plays that back again. Cause that's one of the things the predator also can do is he can like record voices and then like play them back. So when, since he can't speak like English, he'll just use that to like mess with people, I think. Uh, also, do you think like the, the predators, like they have some sort of, uh, sixth sense or they know that this is Dutch's brother because it almost seems like Dutch had some sort of a mental connection to the predator here somehow like he sensed he was going to be there you know and he went off yeah. and then, so do you think like there's a the, the predator like word got back to them like hey this guy has a brother go mess with him <laughs> you know and they're like all right it could be I mean it seems to be like the, the one in predator one seemed like it was on its own it didn't seem like it had a group, really, but maybe it was, you know, relaying reports back that I'm going after this Schaefer guy, but I don't think they, he would know. <laughs> He's going to look up this guy's bio. <laughs> these guys, this guy's brother killed Carl. We have to get him. <laughs> and so he's uh, kicking uh, Schaefer's brother. Well, what, what is his? What, they just call him Schaefer, right? They don't. Does he have a yeah, brother? Yeah, Schaefer. I think his name was Alan. Or no, D- that's Dutch. Well, that was right? Dutch's real name, yeah. Uh, so this guy's name was. John, maybe? All right, we'll just call him Shafe. So uh, the Predator uh, karate kicks Shafe right in the belly and uh, sends him backwards, and he falls out the window. Yep. And, uh, and that's where the book ends, with uh, Shafe falling out the window. <laughs> and that's it. Dun, dun, dun. Predator issue one. Now, I, I, I did look ahead, Jank, and he does survive. Shafe survives. <laughs> he, uh he, he grabs like some clo- like some uh, clothing lines, you know, strung between buildings, drying clothes and stuff like they always did in the, in the movies. Yep, always works. <laughs> he grabs some of those, and then he you know, uh, break your fall. <laughs> yeah, it slowed him down enough, and then he landed on like a pile of garbage bags and stuff. So he survives. He survives. <laughs> and, and then they show him later. He's like in a bar, and he still has that thing in his neck. He just puts a bandage over it. So <laughs> I'm guessing it's like a track. It seemed like it was very flat. Like yeah. I don't know. It doesn't seem like that's going to work very well. Well, it's like a big square. It's kind of a goiter there. 
<laughs> yeah, taped over it, you know. And then yeah. I think he goes into the jungles of uh, South America in the second issue, I think. Yeah. So. Yeah, it looks very much like Predator at that point. He's going into the jungle. <laughs> this is weird <laughs> that you would bring the Predator to the big city and then he immediately take it out of the big city. But, yeah, that's like, uh, you know, Friday the 13th Part 8 logic where it's like Jason takes Manhattan, but only for like the last 10 minutes. And it's the movie. Most of the time he's on a boat <laughs> trying to get to Manhattan. <laughs> so what do you think about Predator here, Jank? How'd you feel about the writing? Uh, it was okay. I didn't, it didn't sparkle for me or anything like that. Um, it was solid enough. Uh, it was kind of what you would expect in this type of kind of cop drama. Uh, overall, I mean, the plotting seemed fine. It was all pretty straightforward. There wasn't a whole lot of, uh, you know, Nuance, I guess. Uh, I could have done with maybe a little bit less of, okay, here's this guy keeps telling, they kind of did, repeated the scene of, um, you know, the captain telling him, hey, get your nose out of this. <laughs> they did that a lot. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know if we need this yeah. so many times, but yeah, yeah, kind of got yeah. the point the first. <laughs> I, I, I thought the dialogue, it was rock solid, uh, except the one dancing line was seemed weird, but otherwise it was very well yeah. written, I think. And, but yeah, <laughs> like, the, the, Shape said something like, uh, those guys couldn't find their ass if they had both hands in their back pockets or something like that. Yeah, that's <laughs> not the best, but, you know, what are you going to do? But uh, I thought it was pretty good. And then, uh, the, like you said, the plotting, it does get a little uh, repetitive there. And I don't know, it just seems, I don't know. It's fine, but. Uh, there could have been better ways for them to find the Predator than just, oh, we're going to go back to that spot. No, he happens to be there. Yeah, <laughs> I just have a feeling he's there. I just I just sense it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that wasn't the best. But overall, um it was solid writing. Nothing too terrible. And uh the arts was okay. Um Yeah, for the most part I thought it was pretty good. He d- draws a really good predator. Yeah, the predator um, looks good. The faces I would say look look pretty good, so that's that's important. Um solid. Like I said, the coloring made things a little difficult to follow sometimes. Sure. But overall it was perfectly fine. Not, not exactly my favorite kind of style of art, but, uh, you know, still good. No, me neither. But, he, I mean, he draws a good Elton John, so yeah, that's all you need. <laughs> it's just, it, this era of comic book art, I'm not a fan, like, from, like, 89 to 93 or 4 or so, there's a, just a style that seemed to be pervading the industry at that time. And, um, oh, that's my era right there. Yes. Yeah. See, I don't really <laughs> enjoy it that much, but uh, I would prefer the 70s kind of stuff. So, but it's, it's perfectly fine again. Um, I will not read any more Predator because, you know, I just don't care. <laughs> but um, it, it was way better than I thought it was going to be. I'll put it that way. Like, I didn't oh, think okay. it was gonna, Yeah, I thought it was going to be terrible. and But I enjoyed it. Like, you know, it was fine. Um, yeah, I mean, you could definitely see the influence on the Predator 2 movie here. So I appreciated that, that it, uh, it set up a lot of things. It is a good oh. premise to bring the Predator to the city. I do like that as an idea, for sure. Um, yeah, so why, was, why go back to the jungle then right away? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Maybe maybe as a flashback. I don't know. I'll just and I think I think they come back maybe in, like, issue three. It's just like, oh, we got to yeah. remind people it's Predator. Yeah. Put him in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There is a, what do you think, Predator issue one, Jay? I'll give it, like, a six. It was pretty solid. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. yeah I'll go six as well. Greatest thing ever, but it's it's... Better than average, I would say. Yeah, yeah, this isn't my kind of thing, you know. Um, I'm not a huge predator guy or anything, but uh, it was professionally well done, <laughs> solid, so good effort, good effort. Not my Make kind contact. Of thing. Yeah, <laughs> solid single. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, all right, uh, there it is, uh, predator. Uh, go and enjoy that. So next week, Jank. What are you going to go? Uh, well, we're going to go back to Marvel. And I've been talking for a while. We need to do some of these big villains, you know. We haven't done there's some villains we haven't done. So next week we're gonna talk about our buddy Baron Zemo. We're gonna Baron Zemo. Baron Zemo. All right. And we're gonna go Avengers issue two seventy seven from nineteen eighty six. And this is the final issue of the Under Siege arc, where yes. uh, Zemo. Oh, you're aware of this? Uh, <laughs> oh, sure. Where the the Masters of Evil like destroy the mansion, pretty much. I think. Yeah, they take over the mansion. The crap out of Jarvis, right? Yeah, that that happens in I think issue two seventy three, and <laughs> yeah, they just swarm the mansion. Like I guess all the Avengers are away, you know, playing grab ass, and Jarvis is only home by himself. And they just uh, 
destroy the mansion and beat the hell out of Jarvis. <laughs> and then they just take control of the mansion for a few issues. And this yeah. is the final installment of that story. So Okay. But yeah, Baron Zemo is the mastermind behind it all. So Yeah. Baron Zemo had some had some plans in his day. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right, yeah, we'll talk about that next week as well. So uh, Baron Zemo comes to Flea Market Fantasy next week. And until then, again, uh, please like and subscribe over on YouTube. And next week, uh, Avengers, we need to do more X-Men, Jank. I, I hear tell the X-Men are doing very good that last episode we did. So maybe yeah. we need to pick more X-Men because uh, <laughs> people like the X-Men. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, X- I don't remember them showing up for X-Terminators. What's <laughs> no, no that? one did. No one did. <laughs> Which is why I was reluctant to pick the X-Men. But, uh, yeah, so there we did. So until next week. Don't get any jank on you.